Hi guys, welcome back to Wild Side Wednesdays. Um, you guys may know that one of our objectives when we get out on the water on our trips is to uh, teach you about and show you the coral reefs here on the west side of the island. So today we're just going to talk about some of the most common reef associated fish that we see out here. So coral reefs are some of the most biodiverse ecosystems in the entire world. They make up less than 1% of the ocean floor, uh, but they support up to 25% of fish species found in the ocean, whether it be through providing shelter and protection, food, or nursery grounds for young fish. Now, you can find such a large variety of animals on the reef from sharks to turtles to rays to invertebrates like uh, sea stars and sea cucumbers, but um, today we're going to specifically focus on the fish that um, spend their entire life living in the cracks and crevices and holes of the reef. So because of geographic isolation, the Hawaiian Islands have a really high rate of endemic fish species. About 20% of the fish that we have here uh, exist nowhere else in the world. So that's why it makes it a really special um, experience to snorkel and dive around the Hawaiian Islands and why it's extra important to make sure we are taking care of our coral reefs and our fish populations. Some of the most common endemic species that we see on our trips include the millet seed butterfly fish. And of course, we can't talk about uh, Hawaiian coral reef fish without talking about the parrot fish. So the parrot fish is really important out here for our reef and also for our beaches. Uh, parrot fish are named so for their fused teeth uh, that form a beak hence the name parrot fish, and what they do is munch on algae on the reef so they help to keep it clean, uh, but then also they're taking bits of that calcium carbonate skeleton uh, in with that algae and they will actually digest that calcium carbonate as sand. Uh, so essentially a lot of the beaches around Hawaii are actually parrot fish poo. Um, it's the Smithsonian states that one parrot fish can produce up to a thousand pounds of sand per year. Another endemic species that we have out here that has a really important job is the Hawaiian cleaner wrasse. This is a little fish with a big job to do. Uh, these guys have specially designed mouths to clean um, mucus and parasites and dead cells off of larger fish. Uh, so they're only about four inches long. They're yellow and purple. You really have to keep your eye out for them, but they're a real treat to see. Uh, you might see a larger fish um, kind of just suspended in the water column with their fins out and their mouth open. And that little cleaner fish will get inside of the mouth and even inside of the gills and eat off any mucus or parasites, things like that, off of that larger fish. So one of the most common groups of fishes that we see out here uh, are the butterfly fishes, and they are one of my personal favorite fishes to see. Uh, there are about 123 species of butterfly fish worldwide, and we see about 23 of them here in the Hawaiian Islands. What characterizes these fish are their round bodies, and there's some variation of black, white, and yellow, and they all display kind of different uh, patterns and designs. In Hawaii, you might hear them referred to as Lao Vili Vili, which means uh, the leaf of the Vili Vili tree because of their round leaf-like shape and really thin, flat bodies. Uh, the longest fish name in Hawaiian actually belongs to one of these fishes, and that is the Lao Vili Vili Nuku Nuku Oi Oi, which is the long-nosed butterfly fish. Uh, what that translates to is the leaf of the Vili Vili tree with a nose that is sharp, sharp. These fish are also monogamous, so if you see a pair of butterfly fish on the reef, that could be a mated pair. And they also display a false eye spot near their tail fin. Uh, we think it might be to confuse predators, so they think their backside is their face. We do have four endemic species of butterfly fish throughout the Hawaiian Islands, so again, meaning uh, that those occur nowhere else in the world, and that does include that millet seed butterfly fish that I mentioned earlier. 
Um, they typically are found in shallow water less than 60 feet, uh, so perfect for the reef, and we do see these pretty often on our trips. Another key player on our reefs and a group of fish that we see very often are the surgeon fishes, unicorn fishes, and tang. So what all these fish have in common is the scalpel before their tail fin. So it's kind of just like, uh, it's made out of keratin. It's just like a sharp piece right before their tail that they use as a defense mechanism. Uh, some of them have one scalpel on each side, like the orange band surgeon fish. Some of them have two scalpels on each side like the orange spine unicorn fish and some of them actually have a horn on their head like the blue spine unicorn fish. Um, so unicorns do exist, they just live in the ocean. Fun fact, if you remember Bubbles from Finding Nemo uh, in the tank, Bubbles is a part of this group of fish. Uh, he is a yellow tang so he does have those scalpels on either side of his body right before his tail fin. You might notice little white spots and uh, those are his scalpels that he will use for a defense mechanism. And we do see him very often out here on our reef. We do have another Finding Nemo character out here on our reefs and that is Gil from the tank, the smartest fish in the tank and also one of the smartest fish on the reef. Uh, Gil is a Moorish idol and they've been said to have a photographic memory and uh, memorize, memorize pathways through the reef. They also display what we call disruptive coloration with those black, white, and yellow bands. Uh, this could be to confuse predators and blend in with the reef. We also get to see one of the strangest looking fishes in the sea, and that is the moray eel. Uh, moray eels are pretty much just fish with elongated bodies, lacking pectoral and pelvic fins, and have uh, also an elongated dorsal fin, so they kind of slither through the water uh, like a snake. Uh, another really cool thing about moray eels is that they actually have two sets of jaws. Their second jaw is called a pharyngeal jaw. You might see these eels on the reef with their mouth opening and closing. Uh, this is not them about to attack you, this is just them breathing. They breathe through a process called buccal pumping, which is moving ox oxygen-rich water over their gills through that uh, opening and closing maneuver of the mouth. Last but not least, we can't talk about Hawaiian reefs without talking about our trigger fishes. We do have many species of trigger fish here. Uh, the one you guys might be most familiar with is the humuhumu nuku nuku apu a'a, which is our state fish, that is the reef or wedge tail trigger fish. What humuhumu nuku nuku apu a'a means is uh, pieces stitched together with a snout like a pig. We do have other species of trigger fish here like the pink tail and lagoon trigger fish. These fish are characterized by a modified dorsal spine in front of their dorsal fin that they can pop up like a trigger and use as a defense mechanism. These fish are also really cool in the fact that they have these long broadened uh, dorsal and pelvic fins that allow them to swim backwards and hover above the reef. There are hundreds of more species of reef fish that I could talk about, uh, but you guys will just have to come out here and see them for yourself. Unfortunately, our coral reefs and our coral reef fish uh, do face a variety of threats, just like every other animal we've talked about in the ocean so far. Uh, some really big threats to reefs are coral bleaching, uh, warming oceans, marine debris, and overfishing. A really big thing you can do to help our reefs and our reef fishes is to be aware of the sunscreen that you're using. Some chemicals like oxybenzone, homosalate, avobenzone, and a whole bunch more are disrupting uh, reproductive patterns in our corals and our fish as well. Um, so make sure that you're using a zinc oxide or titanium dioxide based sunscreen or maybe just switch to using more sun gear when you're in the water, like uh, rash guards and UV protected pants and shirts. Thank you for joining in on the, another Wild Side Wednesdays. Uh, you can visit our Instagram, Facebook, or our website, sailhawaii.com, for more tips and tricks on how to 
protect our reefs and protect our oceans, and we'll see you again next week.